Okay, and now we move on to Bob Proctor, one of the teachers of The Secret. And Bob, welcome to the call. What specific incident changed your life when someone gave to you? Well, you know, Alec, when you asked me that, my mind went right back to when I first read Think and Grow Rich. And I wanted to earn some money. My credit was terrible. I had a bad work record. I mean, I had been going in the wrong way for a long time. I was 26, and I couldn't borrow a nickel from anyone. And I read where if you can't borrow money from one bank, go to another one. And I'm doing this, and of course they want some kind of security. I had nothing. But I told them what I wanted to do, and I remember walking into a trust company in Toronto. The manager asked me to come in and sit down. I wanted to borrow $980, and he gave me the money. He looked at me and said, I believe you're going to do this. And I was borrowing money to go into an office cleaning business. I needed $980. Now, he gave it to me. Now, you could say, well, he lent it to you. No, he gave it to me, and hoping that he would get it back. And, you know, in less than five years, my whole world had changed. I was cleaning offices in Toronto, Montreal, Boston, Cleveland, Atlanta, and London, England. But I'll never forget sitting with that man and him saying, I think you're going to do this, and he gave me the money. And, you know, everything changed for me from that day on. Now, I couldn't borrow money from friends, relatives, no one. I was just a bad bet. But that day, now that's back in 1961, my whole life shifted. If he hadn't given me that loan, I don't know where I'd be right now, but he did. And then God only knows why, because I'm not quite sure. I wasn't a good bet, but he did it, and he made a difference. And I think he just realized that I would do something, and I did. Well... Let's see, did you pass it on? What specific incident well, changed your life? Well, I did pass life? it on, and it's in the same business. And when you ask me these questions, my mind goes back a long way. There was a man, Marinus Tamaris. He was a new immigrant to Toronto, to Canada, and he was wanting to get in the business, and he didn't have any money. Now, I had my business going fairly well by that time. So I gave him the equipment he needed, I gave him accounts, I helped him buy a car, and then I went out and taught him how to drive it. Now, that story left my mind. It was something I did way back 40-some years ago. But his name was Marinus Tamaris. My daughter was working at a company here a few years ago, Ericsson, an IT company, and I noticed the editor of the newsletter for her company was Bessie Tamaris. And I remember he came in my office to thank me one Christmas, and he had his little girl, Bessie, would be maybe five, and she gave me a statue of Socrates that's carved out of bone, I think it is, and at any rate, I've got it sitting behind my desk now. And that reminded me of helping him. Now, the bank manager helped me, and I passed on, and I helped a lot of people because of that. And I think it's affected my whole life giving people something where they really need it and on the surface they don't seem like a good bet. Well, former President Clinton of the United States has a new book out on giving. And What's your take on why giving is so important to the future of humanity? Well, because I think it's one of the laws of the universe. Emerson said it was the law of laws. It's the law of cause and effect. We've been raised to be good little go-getters. We've got to be good little go-givers. And when we get to the point where we have the awareness and we understand that, that our whole focus should be on giving. See, opportunity is tied up in giving. It's not getting. It's not finding. It's tied up in giving. Now, I've got Bill Clinton's book sitting right in front of me, Bill Clinton Giving, How Each of Us Can Change the World. I have not started to read it. It was given to me as a gift. It's sitting here right on top of a pile of books on my desk. But... I believe when we start to understand this, the whole world will shift. I think Clinton's right on that score. Because what we're doing when we give is we're getting in harmony with God's laws. The whole universe operates in a very precise way. Nothing happens by accident. And the one law, the law of cause and effect, as I said, Emerson said, was the law of laws. Well, our only responsibility is look after the giving. The 
receiving is going to take care of itself. And I don't think it really matters where you give. I think it matters that you give. For a long time, I got into tithing, and I think Mark Victor Hansen is one that really got me into it. I was sort of dabbling in it, but he wrote a little book on it many years ago, and I picked it up and read it, and I thought, you know something, he's right. And I've been doing that for years, and since I started to do it, I've never had a financial problem. <laughs> well, the thing is, someone sat me down one time about 10 years ago and said there are two types of people. There are the what-can-you-do-for-me people and then the what-can-I-do-for-you type people. And he said, just make sure that you're a what-can-I-do-for-you type of person. And I think he was really referring to a giver. Why is that so important, you think, in business, before we go to the final question? Well, I think it's important in business because it's a lawful way of operating your business, Alex. It's operating in harmony with the laws that run the whole universe. And we're not trained in these laws. As a matter of fact, I think we're actually conditioned to go against the laws, which is the precise reason the vast majority of people struggle financially. They struggle with abundance in all areas of their life. Mm -hmm. They're self-centered. Most people are unhappy, and it's me-first attitude. And if they put you-first attitude, put the other person first, I think they'd be a lot happier. I've lived both ways, and I have found that the giving person, the one that's looking out to help the other person, is much better off. I'm happy, I'm healthy, I'm wealthy, and I'm a giver. And I'm always trying to figure out how to give more. You know, I said one time about Mark Victory, we were talking about him earlier. I said, you've got to get up early in the morning to outgive that guy. And the people that I know that are moderately and very successful in their life, not just in their business, are givers. They're really trying to figure out how to help other people all the time. And because they're like that, they move into that vibration they are actually magnetizing themselves for the good that they desire. If we want something, give it away, and it'll come back, pressed down and running over. It's an absolute law. That is. And that brings me to the final question. And Gertrude is a giver for sure. And this cause of Africa Alive Education Foundation is supporting the HIV orphans in Zimbabwe. They have HIV, and they really had very little influence over that. And... The first question that comes to mind, many people are listening to this in North America. Why is a cause like this so important and relevant to us when it's halfway across the other side of the planet? Well, you know, that is a real good question, Alex, and I'm glad you asked me that question. See, I think we've got to quit separating the other side of the planet. We're dealing in God, one unfoldment, one plan. And when we stop looking at them and us and start to see us as everything, and it doesn't matter whether you're giving in Zimbabwe or New York City, as long as you're giving. The fact that Gertrude's doing this, she's an excellent role model, and she's into a good cause, and I think that anyone that gives has an opportunity to give to her and support her. I don't think Zimbabwe is any different than here. I know the cultures may be different. I know the conditions and circumstance may be vastly different, but we've got to quit looking at differences and start looking at the same and be just as willing to give there as you are here. And the fact that she has this good cause going and we've got an opportunity to support her in the cause, we should do it. But if she was doing the cause in Louisiana or in Ireland or in Paris or in Australia, it shouldn't really make any difference. We're all one. We're dealing with one mind. We're all hooked together. Yeah, and the interesting thing is no matter what culture, no matter what language, no matter what part of the world, no matter how isolated that part of the world is, I think every culture, every human being on earth understands what giving is. And when they're receiving, they can understand that. Would you agree? Oh, no question about it. Absolutely no question about it. You know, there's so many examples of people that win from giving. I was thinking, I remember years ago reading about Letourneau, the man from the heavy equipment. He tithed 90% of his income. You look at the Mellon family, they can't give their money away fast enough because the more they give, the more comes back. Mm -hmm. We've got to understand that we are meant to live in abundance. We're meant to live with plenty because we have infinite potential. And as long as we're trying to get, we're going to live in lack and limitation. When we start giving, we're going to find that abundance is on our doorstep. And we've got to understand that. And it doesn't matter where you give or who you give to. It's the fact that you give.